Hello YouTubers, what we are going to do today is we are going to sublimate on some socks. Um, in this video we're going to do a whole all over print. See my socks used to be white and now they've got these ridiculously cute reindeer on them. So we're going to set up the jig, talk about how to make your pattern, and then make them on the heat press. So um, let me go show you what you need. Alright, so you're going to need sock, blank socks, um, more polyester, brighter the color. Um, I ended up settling with these. They're Hanes. I actually got these at the Dollar General. Dollar General. Um, they're 97% polyester and feel really nice. Um, I'll leave a link down below to where you can get them off Amazon if you don't have, uh, if they're not your Dollar General. Dollar General seem to be a bit hit and miss on what they have in stock. So, a um, couple things about these. They feel really nice. Um, however, they are tighter. So, if you have big feet or don't like particularly tighter socks, you might want to size up. Um, also, um, where I've taped these, it seems to have kind of chewed up the fabric a little bit. So long-term durability about this, I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you want to have socks that you uh, wear a lot or wear every day, this may not be the best brand, but for some cute, ridiculous Christmas socks or something fun or just like a happy present for a holiday, these would be great because um, they actually do feel really nice. Um, also, uh, when you go searching for blank socks, double check the polyester count because a lot of things are marked for sublimation that aren't. Um, so just be really careful because the majority of socks are going to be made from cotton because cotton is much... Um, it's much cheaper, but it's also much more breathable and things like that. So most socks are going to be made of cotton. So double check before you buy anything, especially online, that they really are polyester and high count polyester. So I bought those. Um, I had originally bought these for this project, and these are actual sublimation socks. The nice thing about them is they've got the cut out toe, the toe and the heel. So what happens is more than likely it's really, really hard to get the heel flat and you end up with like a white spot. Great, it's on the bottom of your foot. So um, so that's why a lot of the sublimation socks have the black marks for uh, to prevent this basically. Um, however, these are really tight and they really are kind of rough and thin. Um, they're not something I would want to wear for many hours on end. So keep that in mind um, when you're buying your socks for your project. Um, if you want something that's really cute for some pictures, it's going to be really easy because you're not going to get any white spots. This might be the sock for you. Um, if you want something more walkable, this may be best for you. It just depends. These actually did come in a big giant bag. And they had extra little bags in here for you to like resell them and, and package them back up. So that may be something you're interested in. So... <clears throat> um, we are going to be using um, my SG400, um, and it's, we're using its biggest size of prints, which is 8.5 by 14. So this is something to think about with your socks. So these socks were just a little too long, so that's why they're white at the top. Um, and I just left them white. We could have printed an extra page and lined it all up, but that just seemed a little expensive. Um, but the sublimation socks, see how much longer they are? You can see how much longer they are. So we really would need to cut another page, print more ink and all of that stuff. So, um, that's another reason I like these socks more. It's totally doable. You would just need to print another page, but, oh, they're just for me. Um, so, uh, sublimation printer, sublimation paper, you, um, could do this with the infusible inks as well. If you wanted to use the infusible inks, I don't recommend something like this because it would be really expensive. But you could do something like this. I actually got these at a um, craft swap at the All Things Silhouette Conference <laughs> many years ago because that's a cameo too. Um, but they just did a little design on the bottom. You could totally do that with this technique we're doing today and with any of the infusible inks as well. Totally work. You could put a cute little message. And 
as always with sublimation, there's no feel of this. There's no vinyl. It's going to stretch. It'll wash and dry without a problem. And it's, it's really cute for something for like Christmas or a special little holiday. So you're also going to need to make a jig. So this is my little jig I made. I've been using um, the chipboard, this uh, silhouette chipboard. Um, I bought this years ago because I thought it was actual chipboard. It is not. It is glorified cardboard. Um, so any cardboard, cardstock, leftover, ugly, thicker scrapbook paper you don't want. Anything like that will work. Um, junk mail would work too. Um, anything like that. Um, just something that you can cut out and tape together. It does need to be a little thicker, but nothing ridiculously thick. It just needs to hold your sock apart and um, flat so that we can press it. So, um, and then heat tape and heat press. Um, you could use the, uh, um, if you had a smaller design, you could use the easy presses as well, but we have a big design. So we're gonna use the heat press and make sure you have butcher paper for this because your design will um, bleed out, will bleed over the actual sock. So make sure you have butcher paper or some kind of paper for that as well. So we are gonna go set this up in the software and I'll show you uh, a couple different ways you can make your patterns and then we'll print. All right, so we are in Silhouette Studio. This is our standard mat and I have my page set up here. So we're gonna use my the eight and a half by 14 inch piece of paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our cutting mat to 12 by 24. And then we're gonna go over here to file and print page setup. And we are gonna go to legal, eight and a half by 14. Okay. And then over here where it says mat size, media size, we're gonna say printer. And that is our eight and a half by 14 inch piece of paper. From here, you can design patterns a couple of different ways. You can make your own pattern if you wanted to. So I came over here to my rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle. Go back over here to my pointer. And then you can go to the fill tool and fill it with colors. You can also fill it with gradients if you wanted to. And all sorts of things you can do. And, and there's more advanced options if you want more colors and the play with gradient. If you wanted to, um, bring in any graphics, you could do that too. And have a bike. I don't know. Anyway, any graphics you see out there, you can bring in. Keep in mind though, that this is going on your foot, which is not the biggest thing. So I've been trying to keep my graphics roughly about two inches tall. So they're still kind of recognizable. Um, like it's Christmas. And so like the big truck with the Christmas tree in it, it's really big. And to get it small enough, so keep that in mind when you're designing whatever it is you want to design. Import all sorts of different um, patterns and things like that, um, whatever it is you want it to. Another option you have are seamless patterns. So um, you can draw your, your rectangle again. Um, you're going to need a, a box for them to fit into. And Silhouette's library has got this really cool feature called uh, patterns. And these are all patterns that I've brought into the software. None of these came with it. Um, this is one I, I got and it's on my desktop. I just saved it on my desktop. My messy desktop are making stuff for Christmas. So grab it and right click and it'll just drag and drop into your software. Now, one thing I do wanna go over real quick with the software, Silhouette software, the more stuff you add into the software, the longer it's going to take it to load, the more likely it's going to crash on you. And Silhouette is not responsible for any design in here that they you did not get from their design store. So um, keep that in mind. Backup, backup everything, and not their back, not their, not their backup. But um, I would save everything you do to a hard drive, to a cloud. I use the Google Cloud, the Google Drive, um, but back up everything just because they're not gonna, they're not responsible and they're not gonna help you if you have hundreds of files that you, that you lose one day. So keep that in mind. Don't mean to be a, a Debbie Downer, just wanna mention that while we're using the uh, software. Um, and any of these you, and cause 
it's particular with the patterns. The patterns get really big. So I mean, these glitter patterns get really, really huge. So keep that in mind. Um, anything you don't want anymore, you can just right click on. You may not, it'll, you can just right click and delete. So let's go back over to design. It put it in here for me, but you can go over here to the polka dots and these are all patterns. Um, and then down here are the patterns that I've loaded into my library. We'll go with these guys. Now, the cool thing with the patterns is these guys are really big. They're a bit big. So right here, down here, I can scale them and make them smaller. And the nice thing about the seamless patterns is I can scale them and there's no break or weird spot in the pattern. Um, my little green reindeer are not. And when I scale them down, see how it breaks in the pattern? That's, they're not seamless and that's why. But any seamless pattern will do this. Just make sure when you buy it, it says seamless. These white lines are okay. It's just a, a, a hiccup in the software. When You're gonna wanna scale it so that you can actually tell what it is on your foot. Um, also, with these little guys, we can actually double click and bring it into. If you double click on a pattern, it'll just bring it in. If you end up with a pattern that you got and it's not seamless, but you have your heart set on it, you can copy and paste. And this is what I did on the ones I got, the socks I made, because like I said, it's not a seamless pattern, is you can zoom in and line it up. There we go. And then group them and then that would be big enough for your socks. So just in case you get something that's not quite seamless, um, you can kind of make it. So I hope that's not too much information. And that's pretty much it. So make your pattern, whatever it is you want, and then we'll do file and print, and we will print it to this Sawgrass Print Manager, and it will contemplate life very slowly. All right, so I pulled up the Print Manager, and already it says eight and a half by 14 because I've been printing my other ones today. Um, so just to make sure, so go to layout and if you're, and come down here to print manager performs layout and you can change your paper size. So if it's still saying letter, you can come down here to legal and then go click back to preserve layout from designer. And then material, polyester fabric, high quality, classic. Um, we are going to mirror this, I guess with this design it matters a little bit more, but yes, we are going to mirror it. And then print, and I'll show you the trick for getting the 8.5 by, uh, by 14 inch paper in. So the standard tray holds 8.5 by 11. To make it hold 8.5 by 14, there are these little green tabs right here. You pop them out. How smart is this? And then pop them till they go into the new grooves. And then when you put your paper in, logo side up, you can move this green little tab right here so that it is the right to distance. And then let me put in another sheet. We're gonna need to print two pieces of paper, one for each sock. All right, and then when you put your tray back in, it's gonna stick out a little bit because it's longer now. Um, print two and we'll be good to go. All right. So to make your template for your sock, our little sock jig, what I did is I just kind of flattened out my sock here. All right, so what I did is kind of loosely flattened out my sock here. You can go to the heat press and flatten it all out via your heat press if you wanted to. I took my marker and made basically a loose shape around it. Now you don't want to make it, because we're going to cut this out, you don't want it to be too wide because you don't want to completely like pancake and stretch your sock out, but just a little bit wider so that it'll stretch out. And then it's a little bit too long for this, so for just, this is, this is 12 by 12 paper. So I just kind of made a little extra over here. And now I'm just gonna cut it out. 
Now, I will fully admit there are some much more complicated ways to sublimate socks out there in the world. Um, like I said, these are just for me. And they're just kind of meant to be fun. Um, if you were doing this for sale, you might want to look into some more complicated, sophisticated ways to do this. If you want to make some cute socks for your Christmas, your kids for Christmas Day, this will work. So, and then I've just been, and you can save this and reuse your extra paper. And then I've just been lining this up and then taping it with just regular scotch tape. And then you can just continuously reuse this jug many times as you want to. Or until uh, paper is done. Voila! We have a sock jig. We have matching sock jigs. Alright, so the hardest process of all of this is getting your sock on your sock jig. Alright. I got no good way to do this. <laughs> I would imagine it's a bit like toddler wrestling with a toddler to get their sock on. Now what, I've got my heat press turned on. And, um... We're gonna go press it flat and see how flat we can get our little heel here. And then we're gonna tape and put our sheets on. All right, so we're over at my heat press. Um, it's warming up. So what I like to do is just press the toe first. They don't have to be long presses. We're mostly just trying to get the wrinkles out. And then you just kind of have to do the best you can to kind of get this flat to be honest like I said I got one flat on one of them and then on the other one I didn't so kind of hope and wrangle hey we did a pretty good job see had a pretty good job right there we might have a little bump right there but other than that we're pretty good all right, so my jig flattened out once my sock wasn't so stretched out. It was causing the jig to bend a little bit, but. So this is my sock, flat bottom. So this is our printed out piece of paper. What we're gonna do now is we are going to fold it in half and then just cut it. And we'll use one for the front and one for the back. So this is our, this is the front of our sock and it is all nice and flat. And so what I did is up here at the top, see my, it's just a little bit too long. Now, if you wanted to make sure all of it was covered, you would just print out a second one and then line it up. So cut off this white little part and line up your pattern again and then tape it together and you could have it all be one piece. But, like I've said, this is just for me, so. I've just decided to leave the top white. So, what we're going to do is roughly try to keep it even. And then we're going to tape my heat tape. And we're going to tape our sock down to our piece of paper. Where's my sock? Now, I've always been a fan of more tape rather than less tape. But legitimately, it's up to you, whatever it is you want to do. Alrighty, so we're gonna go over to my heat press. Um, it is set for 400 degrees for uh, 60 seconds. All right, so we're over at the heat press. I have it set for 405. Um, I normally like to set mine a little bit above because it's the cheap Amazon press, and it doesn't like to sit at 400 degrees. Um, so this is our sock, all taped up. And I'm gonna put it right here. Now, where this paper is exposed, it is going to stain our butcher paper. So that's why you need to have butcher paper. So, and you could do more than one at a time, but doing this with a YouTube video, I am bound to make a mistake. So we're gonna do one at a time. Um, I put butcher paper on top. Technically, you don't need it, but it makes me feel better about life. 
So we're gonna close it, so 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Alrighty. See, there's my extra pattern is. Let me peel it off. Freaking cute are the gnomes. All right, do it the right way and peel off the tape first. How flipping cute are the gnomes though? We're gonna let my sock cool down and then we're gonna do the other side. All right, so these are my socks. I've let them cool down for a minute. Um, and this was our paper. So this was what sublimated and this was the extra. And then this was our original printed paper. You can see how much it brightens up. A lot of people have concerns about that. So I just wanted to show y'all. But this is done. Um, if you try to sublimate with it again, you're just gonna get a bit of a mess. So basically we just flip it and do the same thing again. Um, so I try to line up my, oh, before we do that. So you're not gonna sublimate this part. So what you do is you just gently pull it in. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just kind of gently pull it in. So basically you don't have just a giant white line down the side of your sock. So don't move it. And don't take your sock out of your jig and put it back in. And it would be best if you did this like all in one setting. Don't like make a bunch of front socks and then, I don't know, go make a bunch of back socks. I don't know. Do this all in one go. But you just want to move it over a little bit so that you don't have giant white marks down the side of your sock. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to line it up so that... We have about the same little spot of white at the top and then we're going to tape it again and put it back in the heat press for another 400 seconds and then we're going to repeat all of this with our other sock. Now once we are back over the heat press we don't want to put our sock on this spot again because it risks the ink depositing back on our sock so we want to put it in a new spot. Okay. And 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Alrighty. So we're gonna flip it off. I'm gonna flip it over. Take this tape off. Now you are gonna wanna take this off pretty quickly because you run the risk of it continuously sublimating as long as it's kind of warm. So. If you leave it on there, you can end up with a really, really dark sock, basically. So, there we go. You are going to want to discard this paper because you run the risk of this ink depositing back onto any other garment you put in here. So you do want to discard this, uh, the butcher paper at this point. All right, so this is my second sock I'm fixing to press. Technically, you're supposed to lint roller the socks off before you put them in the, before you press them to get any lint off. Cause what happens is if you sublimate the lint, the lint has the ink on it, but not the sock. So you risk basically spots. So lint roller your sock off before you, uh, before you sublimate on them. All right, there are our little gnome socks. Aren't they cute? These are our original reindeer that we made. So the reason we squished them around the side is so that you don't have a giant like white streak down your sock. This way there's at least color there. Um, no, they're not gonna line up. The pattern is not gonna line up, odds are. Um, so know that it's down the side of your foot. So the top of your foot will still have a pattern. Um, if you did want to make sure that they lined up, what I would suggest is having like a solid color on the outside and one design up the middle and you could design that in your software program and you can use any software program that's out there. Um, you don't have to use Silhouette software. It was just one of the easiest ones I have. Um, there are more sophisticated ways to make socks out there. And if, and if you want to go be a professional sock sublimator, I would highly look into this. If you want to use some cardboard and what you have around the house to make some cute socks for Christmas, this way is perfect. Um, 
These have even been washed and dried and look just as good as these do. I'm totally stoked. We we're totally wearing these, these little gnomes today. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer. Um, and I hope you enjoy your sublimated socks. Like and subscribe.